So look, the Travis Rudolph trial is over and Travis has his freedom. Thank goodness. But uh, remember Travis's lawyers, Heidi and Mark, and they got up there and did the doggone thing and showed us all the corruption down there in the, um, was that Broward County, Palm Beach, Palm Beach County? Mm, Palm Beach County prosecutor's office. Listen, I'm usually a pro pro prosecution kind of girl, but only if they're doing the right things. Those prosecutors, in my personal opinion, in that case, mm -mm 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 -mm, no good. Nope, nope, nope. They brought charges when they should not have brought charges, in my opinion. But um, Heidi and Mark, well, they are friends of our girl, Brady Churchwell, over there at the 13th Shore. And so they showed up yesterday on Brandy's live feed, and they did a two-hour interview. Oh, child, if you have not seen it, you got to go see it. Because this interview had everything. It had pictures. It had guns. It had an Elvis impersonator. It had everything. So look, Heidi and Mark show up. First of all, let me just, first impressions, right? The very first time Mark Shiner opened his mouth, I was like, oh, hello, Brooklyn. How you doing, Brooklyn? Because everything about this man is Brooklyn, in my opinion. Now listen, Brooklyn is our most diverse borough. Okay, fine. They got everything down there. But as soon as he opened his mouth, like, if you're not from New York, well, that just sounds like a New York accent. But if you're from the tri-state, you're like, oh, hey, hey, Brooklyn, how you doing, Brooklyn? Because he sounds Brooklyn. Anyway, and then Heidi, you know I'm shallow. Let us be abundantly clear. I am shallow, which is why I'm always at the gym. Not shallow enough to like get up and put on lipstick and a bra for y'all, but you know, regular shallow. I can just like look at other people and judge them like I am wont to do. So um, I was like, I really don't know that much about Heidi. Heidi, although she looks like a sexy librarian, doesn't she? she like when you see her in court, her hair is all pulled up and in her pictures, her hair is all pulled back. But then you expect her to go home and like whip the pencil out of her hair and toss her hair around and be like, Mark. I'm home, get the books, like whatever. Um, and maybe do a little dance. That's just my imagination, you know, run off with me. But she's super smart. And like, not only just gorgeous, gorgeous and smart. That is what I aspire to be. So she got up there with her sexy, young Catherine, uh, Catherine, little, I cannot talk this morning. Kathleen Taylor, doesn't she look like a young Kathleen Taylor? Like that, that smoky, sexy voice, um, but super, super smart. And she was telling us about um, the Travis Rudolph case, her experience there with other cases that are going on and how they're basically like justice warriors down there in Palm Beach County. And I was just like, oh, tell us more. child." And you know, I, the facts and the figures and the DNA, all of that is good and that is necessary. But do you know what I want to know? I want to know the tea. Oh, this channel is called Gossip, Rumor, and Innuendo. It's not called law and facts and remembering people's names. Mm -mm, mm -mm, not at all. Um, I enjoy true crime. I enjoy gossip. And here, my two loves come together. I mean, I love other stuff. I love my kids. I love my dogs. I love my job. I love my life. I, I, there's a lot of things around here for me to love. But really, from the time I was like a wee little kid, gossip. I wanted to sit quietly in the back of the room and listen to the grown-ups talk because I wanted to know all their business. It was nothing for me to do with it. I'm six years old. I don't, wh what am I going to do finding out that my uncle um, cheated on his wife? Like, it it's none of my business. Of course it's not. But that don't mean I don't want to know. So I was sitting there listening to Heidi and Mark, and I was like, tell us all of everybody's business. And so this is what I found out. Not everything. This is just what I can remember. Because, you know, my head is full. There's other gossip going on that I got to store in there. And sometimes when you put new gossip in, the old gossip falls out the back. But whatever. Did you know? Now, we knew that Dramonique Jones, um, Keyshawn's sister, mm, the whole Jones family, what does their mama think, right? If you, I mean, maybe their mama is like hood radish like them. I, I don't know how that works. But something tells me in that family, apple tree. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, Dominique, clearly a gold digger, who was going after this NFL player, thought she was going to get her come up, right? Thought she was going to make all this money and do all these things and be Mrs. Travis Rudolph or whatever. She was banking on him. Something tells me a lot of this woman's life is transactional. If I do this for you, you do that for me, etc. right? So, um, she's married. 
Now, yes, she was dating an NFL player, a former NFL player, or trying to get back in the NFL player, whatever he was, but um, she was married. But she didn't bother to mention that because it just, you know, that was not her business to tell. If it was not her business, whose business was it? Unclear. But um, yesterday, we found out a little information about the dude she's married to. Oh, well, this is what I'm here for, right? I was like, oh, go on, Heidi girl, say more. So, um... Apparently, Miss Dominique married a man who is in, um, who has been convicted, accused. I don't know. He a criminal, y'all. He's a criminal. He has um, several like major felony crimes. Oh, it, he does not seem like marriage material. Also, he does not seem like her type. She seems like the kind of girl who's out here getting a new booty so she could go find her like a rich man to support her digging up the gold. But um, why, pray tell? Would she marry a man who's in a federal detention center unless he's a drug kingpin? Now, if he's a drug kingpin, yeah, that seemed like a dude she would marry. But um, this dude, mm -mm, that don't seem right. But maybe he is a drug, drug kingpin, and we just don't know. Because I can't imagine her marrying just like a regular dude. Also, she married him to keep him in the country. Uh, isn't that illegal? Like... If you marry a person because you love them and as a bonus side effect, they get to stay in the country, that's like, that's fine. Because 90 Day Fiance, that's what that entire show is built off of. But you're like, hmm, this criminal is about to uh, be deported. I think I'll marry him. That does not seem entirely legal to me. But based on what we know about Miss Dominic being transactional the way she is, wonder how much she got paid for that marriage right? Like it just makes common sense to me, allegedly for entertainment purposes only. I'm just saying, um, seems to me that was a transaction. That was not a marriage. I mean, I guess a marriage is a transaction, but she was leaning more on the transaction side of it as opposed to the marriage side of it. And I'm like, Hmm, did she love him? Did she think she could love him? Did her kid or kids love him? Because you know, I looked up the record. Now listen, I'm not into facts and figures, but in the name of nosy, oh, I will let my fingers do the walking. Yes, it will. And old girl has two, yes, at least two paternity suits on the books. Now that doesn't mean that she wasn't going up and down the block like, hey, um, boo boo, will you take this paternity test for me? Thank you. I'm just, I got this at the CVS. And if we could just swab your cheek. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. And take that on down, whatever, mail it in, whatever you have to do, child. I never did a CVS paternity test. So I don't know, but I know you could get them there. Or is it online, Amazon, whatever. I know you could do like an at-home paternity test. Two of those paternity tests went to court, which to my mind says, one, she has one baby and she couldn't figure out between two dudes what who the daddy was. Or two, she has two babies and each time the fathers wasn't trying to claim them kids. Because uh, if you had a baby with uh, Dominique, would you be telling people? No. Um, and... She don't seem like the kind of girl who's chaste, if you know what I mean, right? She probably was like swabbing cheeks all over the hood, allegedly. For entertainment purposes only, in my opinion, I'm just saying. Um, so in my imagination, this is what I have decided for myself. She married this dude to keep him in the country. She got some of his nice illegal gotten gains for that transaction and then at one point i believe they lived together and then there was a domestic violence situation according to the reporting um who was beaten on who unclear because normally i think oh there's a couple domestic violence that poor lady got beat up but no one dominic child she might have been doing the beating he might have been like hello police i know i'm a felon but this lady over here crazy and she trying to shoot me up or whatever whatever i don't know she, Miss Dominique, oh, she got papers on her. She got all kinds of, because I read all the papers. Um, domestic violence, paternity, eviction, a lot, a lot, a lot of eviction. How you a gold digger and you getting evicted all the time? You not good at gold digging. You need to dig some better gold. Because to me, to my mind, a good gold digger gets herself set up like a real sugar baby. You like the real, real deep, you the brown sugar baby. You get set up, he takes care of you for years at a time, and there's no court papers at all. That's the way the gold digger game is supposed to be run. She a splendor baby. She a sweet and low baby. I don't know what she's doing. She's doing it wrong. And then 
her brother and his friends. Now listen, after Sebastian got killed, oh, I read all the little go for me. We're going to start a scholarship because Sebastian has such a good heart. And yes, he was rolling on a dude and the dude shot him up. He was threatening somebody's life and he got killed. But we're going to start a scholarship fund. And, oh, we miss him so much. But then on the social media pictures, all you see is him with the grills and the money on the ground and the guns at the mall or whatever. You can't have a gun at the mall down there in Palm Beach County. That's that's not a thing. That is very, very illegal. So he's like designer head to toe. Here's a fun fact or a hot tip or possibly a life hack. If you designer head to toe, but you written your house, you doing money wrong. You just doing it wrong because those clothes those are a depreciating asset and a house is an appreciating asset. Now that, I'm not saying you have to buy a house. You don't, you don't have to buy a car. You don't, you can walk everywhere and wear like uh, lands in child. I don't know. I don't care. But what I'm saying is if you got all the fancy, whatever you trying to look rich and not be rich personally, I would rather be rich. Am I? No, no. I'm just a nice regular lady who lives in North Jersey with a high ass taxes trying to get by, right? Me and my Toyota. Is it a G-Wagon? No, it is not. It is a Toyota, a Corolla. That means the little one. I used to have a camera. You don't care what cars I drive. You really, really don't. But if you really need to know my favorite, favorite place to buy a car, aside from the Toyota dealership, possibly the Subaru dealership, is um, I used to go through the, uh, the obituaries. I love me an old man car. So what you get in North Jersey is a big giant car that seats six. Yes, I once had a vehicle, a regular motor, auto, motor vehicle, a car that seated six people, got it out of the obituaries. So my grandpa died. Oh, I want your car. Because they don't drive much. They keep it in the, in the garage. They treat it like it's their woman. Low mileage, excellent maintenance, cheap price. You singing my song. Now, that is not Dominique's song. That is not the Jones family motto, from what I could tell. Because Keyshawn, Dominic's brother, oh, he all on the social media with the fancy shoes and money all laid out. Y'all got that money all laid out. Why aren't you paying your rent? I just, I'm just, I'm asking for a friend. Because uh, all them eviction notices, your mama got eviction notices, you got eviction notices, but you up on social media with all of this money, you could just scoop some of that up and take it down to the rental office and get yourself set up. Or be perfectly sure about who the baby daddy was so that uh, you didn't have to have all these papers that I then go in public and look them up. You didn't, you couldn't, that didn't, uh, uh, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. You live your life like you want to live your life. Now, back to Mark and Heidi, because you know I will go far afield all up into my business. They met at work, because you know that's the part I care about, right? Like, mm, did you start dating at work? Did you see each other across a crowd of courtroom and just fall in love? Like, oh. The hearts come out of your eyes like on the cartoons. I want to know exactly what happened. I met my husband at work too, but the story of me and him meeting at work is too dirty for me to share here on the YouTubes because, you know, it's public and folks might see it. But really, um, he just kept hitting on me and talking to me and trying to holler. And I was like, I'm sorry, sir. No, mm -mm, no, I, mm -mm, no. Because I was a snob even then, right? I was just like, no. And I told him to his face, in no uncertain terms, oh, you're aiming too high. Yeah, you, you, you're you not qualified to date me because it's qualifications to get all of this. I'm not just passing it out, right? I, there are qualifications. Your application, sir, has been rejected. And so he went and did whatever he did and got his whole situation together. And then he came back. He was like, let me just take you to lunch. And I was like, we'll see. And then after two years, everybody who knows me knows this story. And my husband knows this story too. After two years of him chasing and potentially harassing me in a way that was not appropriate, um, I was like, I will go to lunch with you. And I went to lunch with him and he had bad manners. And I was like, nope, because mm -mm. the table manner situation is not all it needs to be. Thank you so much for your application and bye-bye. And then a little while later, he was like, no, 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 no. And I don't remember why I gave him, oh, we were going to go to the movies. He invited me to a movie and I didn't want to go. And my girlfriends talked me into going. And I went to the movies and I was like, oh my God, he's really nice. He's very sweet. And then I got sick and um, he came and brought me like ginger ale or whatever. And I didn't even really know him like that. I don't even know how he knew where I live, but he brought me ginger ale and jello, blah, blah, blah. Then we fell in love. So what happened with y'all, Mark and Heidi? Was y'all getting together in the file room and like, smooching. Mark, was you grabbing on her booty? I know how them Brooklyn boys do. Anyway, Mark and Heidi give a long form interview over there on the 13th. Sure, that's my girl. You listen, y'all know I'm obsessed with Brandy Churchwell. I got nothing but free time. Well, 
Not really. But um, I make time for the things that I'm interested in. And if I had more free time, I would fully stalk Brandy. But she's not that hard to stalk. She always just sitting over there in the chair, the third teacher, talking to us and making charts and stuff and helping us under understand things, which... I need that because I'm busy. I can't be getting all down in the details. I need somebody to make me a pretty, pretty graphic so I can understand what happened. And then I can be like, oh, according to this chart, you did it guilty. And then I can leap to conclusions and gossip about your personal life. That is what we do here at Gossip Rumor and Innuendo. That's how this all works. You're not here for news. You not here for facts. You here for per people's personal business. And you know what I'm here for? To tell you people's personal business. It's a fair trade. So all of that to say, go on over there. If you want actual facts and actual information about things, check out. Um, oh my God, I just gave a 15 minute commercial for Brandy and Mark and Heidi, but that's okay. I like them. They're my friends. Um, okay. Oh, you look at that. The sun is coming up. When I started these videos this morning, this was pitch black. Lewis was the first video I did this one. Oh, the first video I did this morning was about the Melly trial. If you look at this window, watch this space. In my first video this morning, this space was black because it was dark outside. And now the sun is coming up. So if the sun's coming up, that means I need to go get ready and uh, get ready to log on and like put on some foundation garments and maybe a little bit of lipstick and sit here like I'm an actual worker in an actual office. Okay, so you go work at your actual job. I'm gonna put Brandy in one of my ears and I'm gonna get on with the rest of my day. You make it a good one. Bye.